Hi, Misha here. This is another episode of Story Time. Pretty informal, just kind of personal video. And uh, Jay and I went shooting today, and we both agreed that instead of focusing on store guns, we were just going to pick guns. We felt like shooting. Obviously, bring the camera with, but not really worry about professional stuff too much and just yeah whatever we wanted to and Jay needed to try out a 308 so I bought brought some 308 with and so I decided to bring my favorite FAL or actually according to my list I made early in the year my second favorite FAL <laughs> but I will say this is one I wanted for a very long time and since these have been in the news and you know, kind of on the minds of a lot in the gun community lately, I thought, talking about the Israeli light barrel FAL, known as the Romat, might be kind of fun. Also, shoot it at the range. Now, the one most people are thinking of today is the DSA Israeli light barrel. They have kind of the standard and the officer's grade. And this is often just called the Hebrew Hammer. And the Israeli guns, excuse me, the DSA guns are nice condition Israeli standard infantry, light barrel, Romat parts kits, assembled in 2019 on DSA receivers. With a few U.S. parts thrown in for modernity's sake. My gun is very similar. It is also uh, Romat parts. But it was assembled a very long time ago now, 40 years ago, on a DSA SBL, Stuxner's Brothers Limited, Israeli receiver, and sold off in the late 80s by Arms Corps. And the reason, you know, one thing that's kind of funny... I've realized in recent years these are considered relatively rare, relatively unknown Israeli, or any FAL variant. To me, these are very common for the simple fact that one of the key gentlemen who got me into FALs 20 years ago owned one of these that he bought brand new back in 1988-1989. So knowing his gun, it was just common. In fact, of his guns, it was kind of his shooter, because back in the day... These were relatively cheap, at least compared to the FN offerings. So yeah, I'd wanted one for years, and it kind of became a running joke with him. <laughs> and then I finally picked one up, although this is not actually his gun. He still has it. But before I get more into story time, let's, uh, let's go to the range. I like to run a couple of mags through this every year or two just to make sure it didn't feel lonely and neglected. So we'll do that and we'll come back here and I'll ramble on a little bit more. Israeli FAL. Israeli FAL. Israeli FAL. Gotta hang up on the uh, loading ramp. Mag yeah, those are time. DSA mag. That that's a DSA mag. So yeah. this gun has always been reliable. As you saw, Jay's luck with FALs is abysmal, uh, and I don't mean even just kit builds. Completely original pre-band guns, and this time he picked up a DSA mag to try. I had my doubts because it fit the gun very tight and the mags loaded very 
difficult. Yeah, DSA mags are not rubbish, but they have a certain reputation in the FAL community for a reason. So with Israeli mags, it loaded and ran fine. But with the DSA, you saw he had that one failure to feed. And I think that's because the mag was fitting so tight that it had zero flex, therefore the round didn't quite get pushed properly. And that just goes to show you the importance of good mags. And quite frankly, any and every gun can have a small mal malfunction now and again, even pre-bands. So, you know, there's a bit of controversy about these SBL guns. What's for sure, they're Israeli parts kits. Most of them you find are light barrel, although there are a few heavy barrels floating around. And everyone agrees these receivers are Israeli. And by that I mean they actually started life off as Belgian forgings from FN, but Stutchner's brothers, SBL, did the final machining and they installed the semi auto ejector block and put final markings including the Hebrew one kind of weird thing are the rivets for the semi auto block are kind of odd some people find them ugly they're definitely different also the lightning cuts on these receivers there's actually Three different styles, a straight type 3, and then a type 1, and kind of a hybrid like this. That's just how they did them. Some people have said it's because FN wanted Stutchners to make them look differently, so they wouldn't get mixed up. And you know what, I can believe that, because back then, FN was still exporting guns to America, so I'm sure they didn't want other guns being mistook for their own. Either way... Everyone agrees that the parts are all Israeli. Also, everyone agrees these are technically all pre banned The first ones were actually imported and sold by Onyx back in 1987. But then, very soon, maybe it was 86, I apologize. But then, very soon, Arms Corps stepped in, Jack Freeze, and they would bring some in until the infamous import ban it happened early on in 1989. So the semi-auto receiver is not a military receiver because we have that once a machine gun, always a machine gun thing. It, it can't be. Also, the parts these were built from were a mix of new old stock Israeli and maybe refurbished original service because by the 1980s both the Romat and the MacLeon were being taken or already really had been taken out of service with a few exceptions. That means it does have a lot of Israeli unique features. It also means because the guns originally were Belgian, Israel never made complete whole FAL guns. The early guns were all Belgian, and then as parts wore, and they needed more, they would make more themselves. Keep in mind, IMI at the time, in the mid-1950s, was a very nascent, very new company. The Uzi he had only just come out, so they were still learning how to do full manufacturing. <clears throat> so yeah, a lot of parts would get replaced over time. This is an early pattern barrel. And I should mention, because these were built from parts kits, there are a ton of variations in these, just as they use different parts. For example, with this barrel, this is the early pattern, 21-inch light barrel. It has the original pattern of bayonet lug that I could also mount the grenade launcher. You can also find some that have this lug, but then it were also threaded with an early version of the combo flash hider grenade device that Israel would use. And then there are some others that will have the 
combo device and no lug. My friend's I was telling you about, his actually has the device and the lug. Uh, the gas block is another good example. A lot of guns will have the original FN open ear gas block. But as those needed replacing, I would imagine through corrosion and just general wear and tear, IMI would start to make them. And they have this very unique trapezoidal sight protector, which I believe is actually cast. I've read that anyway. But I'm sure they went to it because it's much thicker, more durable, and maybe honestly easier to machine too. Very unique is really part, although again, not all these guns will have it. The handguards too. There are a few different patterns, but they all should have this metal grill and then the wood kind of two piece. <clears throat> they also have these donuts on top. <laughs> They're actually spacer rings. A lot of guns just have one ring, the one in the back, but some have two, like mine. They're just there to make sure that it doesn't get crushed. Carry handle. You can have the Israeli pattern, like here, where it's a single wire with a non-rotating handle, just molded on top. Or you can have an FN pattern, where this actually moves and is more of a separate piece. You have the Israeli charging handle. This is one thing that bugs me about mine, but I've seen it on a lot of them too. This is the larger handle. Most people usually consider it to be associated with the heavy barrel, but it may just be a later production. There is a smaller version, often considered a light barrel, and I actually would like to put one in mine. Either way, what's neat about it, you press it in and that locks to the carrier, operating as a forward assist or so-called silent closure device. A very unique Israeli part. Israeli made bolt hold opens are easy to ID as they have this small hole in them. Likewise the Israeli mag catch is a little bit larger than some and has a small hole and kind of bulge out in the bottom. The trigger guard on this one is the scalloped type, kind of rounded, not straight across. There are some that are even more scalloped, and some that are more straight, so there's variations there. The Israeli pistol grip, while very similar to standard FN, is unique to itself. And as far as I know, these all had the plastic grip. The safety is a safe semi. It has this tab on top where it cannot rotate into what would be the full auto. And that's something also very unique to Israel. Even their Macleon, their heavy barrels that have the three position, they still have this two arm type safety that would be safe Oh, excuse me, semi in the down position, safe in the middle, and then full auto, if this tab were not here, would be up. Very nice, that way you can train your soldiers to keep it in the middle, and then down or up, as opposed to pushing it too far. I think it's a great thing, plus it's an oversized um, selector compared to standard. And this is not something done to make this a semi-auto. On most all of your romats, this was a standard selector because they were intended to be used as semi-automatic only self, uh, excuse me, uh, self-loading type rifles. It was the Macleons that were considered the option of full auto. Moving on on the back, we have the later style horizontal takedown. It's possible to get a vertical. And then up here we have the tall Israeli sight, which is just an early FN feature. 
all of your Israelis will have the tall sides as far as I know. We have on this one a type C stock with the metal ferrule and then wood stock. I don't think any would be a type A, but I think there are some type B's, but anything's possible. We have the unique Israeli wood stock. It's a little bit shorter. Also, like unlike a lot of the FNs, it does not have the 360 rotating swivel. It just has a more standard swivel. And it has just a standard metal butt plate without trapdoor. Very Israeli-esque features. And any of these things can be different because, again, they were diving into part spins to build these. But the kind of the debate is where they were built. So no one disputes that these were all Israeli parts, receiver and barrel included, and that they're all pre-89. The dispute is were these actually assembled in Israel and imported as whole guns? Or did Arms Corps simply have the parts kits and then contract with SBO for the receivers? And then having these guns assembled stateside. And some say maybe both happened. I have my opinion, but since I can't back it up with complete facts, and since unfortunately Jack Freeze has passed away now, I know because I own part of his former collection, we really may never know. And does it really matter? On some guns, Final Assembly does, because a lot of technique will go into it. AKs are kind of that way. HKs are definitely that way. HK pattern roller guns. FALs, though, they're really <clears throat> pretty simple, straightforward guns. No welding and no riveting is required. Really, the only thing that requires anything bigger than a hand tool is uh, screwing the barrel in. And then once you screw it in and time it at 12 o'clock, Setting the headspace is super easy. You simply use pin gauges, see what size locking shoulder you need, dive into your bucket of locking shoulders, tap her in, test again for headspace, and go about your merry way. And the guys over at Arms Corps were definitely competent FAL builders. So, it doesn't really matter. We have an FN forged <clears throat> SBO finished out receiver. We have an is original Israeli 21 inch light barrel. We have Israeli wood furniture. Also worth pointing out, the Israeli gas system is kind of unique. The length of the piston and the gas plug are a little different from later metrics. There wasn't so much a change that Israel made is that they adopted an early, earlier version of the FN, and then later FN would change things slightly. Again, kind of like with the tall sights. FN would later go to the short sights that are about 3 millimeters lower. <clears throat> but, you know, Israel was an early adopter because, damn it, in 1954, 1955, they needed a rifle. And that actually made them one of the first nations to field 7.62 by 51 7.62 NATO which pretty much all FALs especially all military FALs were chambered for but I just I've always liked the look of this gun this pattern the hardwood and the, the parkerized finish some people like guns that are all brand new, all matching, all commercial. I like that even if the receiver isn't the, the lower frame and everything 
bolt is military. Like this, this has heritage. Is it a kit build? Yes, yes it is. It's a pre-band kit build. Is it a Frankenfowl? Hell no. Frankenfowl means you have parts from every which nation on earth. This is all Israeli. It may be Israeli from different eras. You might have early and late parts. But you know what? Most militaries go buy an M1 Grand or an M1 Carbine. It could have a mix of early and late parts. As military guns get rebuilt and refurbished, it happens. And no one calls those Franken carbines or Franken grands. Franken grand. There's a word. <laughs> and most importantly, these are damn good guns. They're, they have great fit and finish. Uh, they're reliable. They're obviously durable. You don't hear of them breaking. They're not especially mag sensitive. They're accurate enough. I mean, the FAL is not known for accuracy, but they get the job done. Really, the only kind of negative is, again, just a symptom of being an early pattern. They have the single-piece extractor. It's not as good as the later two-piece, mostly in the durability department, but, yeah, so it goes. But they still have the adjustable gas system and grenade or gas cutoff plug that you could use for grenades. This is an Israeli sling. Basically a copy of a British style. Here is a well-worn Israeli mag pouch. Two, sock, two pocket. Holds two 20 rounders. Israel did make mags. Typically of very good quality. They're Phosphated, otherwise they're, aside from markings, the same as the standard metric FAL. But yeah, we were just wanting to bring guns out, and I thought everyone's kind of thinking about the light barrel because of DSA, which is great, because for a very long time, Israeli light barrel kits were just hard to get and expensive when found. You could find the heavy barrels, but uh, yeah, the lights have always been a little... Elusive. So it's nice to see kind of a, even if it's a limited or kind of special production, it's nice to see light barrels available. It's not an especially heavy 308 or even all that long. I just, I don't know. I always really liked it. I don't blame my friend for never wanting to sell his. This one I got off a different friend years ago. I've had it for oof, six years, seven, eight, a while. And it's definitely not one I will ever pass along. There's only the one other FAL that I like more. But I talk about all that in my favorite FAL vids. <laughs> Anyway, guys, if you have one of the DSAs, I'd love to hear your experiences. How many Israeli parts did you get or FNs? If you have any questions, I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Unfortunately, I don't really know that anyone knows exactly how many of these came in and were sold. They were kind of a sleeper. My friend who bought his in 88 89 said they were just advertised, and they're about half the price of a Belgian, so... They were kind of marketed definitely to the shooter or Israeli fan, but they weren't marketed as some super great collectible. It was more of a, a value gun, a budget gun, much like the Springfield Brazilian Imbel SAR-48s, which um, they also did in Israeli, but it was a heavy barrel. And I featured that in several videos, too, along with this rifle. But yeah, check out the FAO playlist if you'd like to see any more of that. I know a few of you have asked for us to do more FAL vids, so without a whole lot new coming in, it's a little hard. And I probably will get my hands on one of the DSAs, and we can do a side-by-side -side with that and this one. See how it stacks up, but I have pretty good faith in DSA. I've always thought they made good products for the money at any rate. Hell of a lot better than the old Hess receivers. Trust me. <laughs>
Alrighty guys, well it's been a long day at the range and got a lot of cleaning up to do, so I'm going to let you go for now. Any questions, post them below. And if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and on the behalf of Jade as well, we appreciate it, and we will catch you very soon next time.